So hand making an entire 18th century men's shirt is exactly what everybody does when they're really bored in quarantine, right? My newest hyperfixation was making TikToks and I had made one based around the making of my 18th century men's shirt. A follower asked me how I made it. However, at the time I was not able to give a video reply to it because of how extensive the information is. It was much better suited towards a YouTube video, which I was not prepared to make. However, I did have three hours to spend drawing out a diagram. So I had made the diagram and said, post it on my Kofi. And it's still available and acts as a sort of companion to this video or vice versa. However, I will be going step by step through all of the drafting measurements and formulas that you will need. So you don't necessarily have to reference it. But if you would like to reference it, it is linked in my description box. This is a great garment if you're doing a pirate cosplay or a molly mock or any other cosplay or costume that might require some very, very extra sleeves. It's also great if you just want to feel fabulous around the house. I used the costume close-up book as a reference. My proportions were a little bit smaller than the ones that they had given, so I went a little rogue with the sizes. However, the cuffs and collar are about the same. And based upon my proportions that I used, I have made a formula of sorts to allow you to draft your own based upon your own measurements. The extra ease that I have used is merely suggested. I used the most limited amount of ease that I could at the time because I was limited on fabric. The entirety of my shirt is hand sewn. You do not need to hand sew everything. This was just my personal preference and I didn't have a lot going on at the time so I could just sit and hand sew my garment in a few days. I tried to replicate 18th century stitches and techniques as closely as possible. I just basically used common sense of what I knew that they would have. But for my first shirt, I used linen from fabric stores and for my second shirt, I used linen from Burlington Trowbridge. It's roughly the same weight, roughly the same kind, and they're very comparable. So depending on how shipping and other supplies you need, I would definitely check out the two. But again, I'll link everything that I've used for this particular shirt and the previous shirt that I have made. So let's get started with drafting. Now we're gonna take our measurements. First, we're gonna want our bust, shoulder to hem, or where the shirt will fall, shoulder to neck, shoulder to wrist, bent elbow, wrist, and neck. Now we're going to take our bust measurement and add 10 inches. You can add more if you'd like to have more room or more gathering on the neckline. Now we're going to take our shoulder to hem, multiply it by 2, as we're cutting both the front and back as 1. Now we're going to take our shoulder to neck measurements and add 3 inches. Find the middle of your body piece and measure in from either side of the body. The points in between these two measurements will be our neck hole. Measure down from the middle of your neck hole 7 inches and this will be our front slit. Now onto the sleeves. The longest part of our sleeve is going to be equal to our shoulder to wrist measurement. The added proof will be provided by the 3 inches we added in the shoulders. Now for the height, we will take your bent elbow measurement at 5 inches. We will cut two of these. Now onto the cuffs. Cuff height is going to be a set amount. You can make this as tall or as short as you want. Just be sure to double it because we'll be cutting as one. I'm making mine six inches tall, so three inches when it's finished. Take your wrist plus two and a half inches, and that will be the width. Now for the collar. The collar, like the cuff, is cut as one and on the fold. You can choose the height to whatever you desire, Mine will be 2 inches, so 1 inch when finished. Take your neck measurement plus half an inch or an inch depending on how snug, and that will be the length.
for the sleeve gusset. We'll cut two and then sew them on the fold. These squares will be three and a half inches by three and a half inches. The neck gusset is the same, two and a half by two and a half inches. And you'll cut two of each of these squares. You can either put these directly onto your fabric or you can make a paper version. Since I'm cutting out directly from my fabric and I'm using linen, I'm using a thread drawing method in order to cut out mine. Work from biggest piece to smallest piece, ensuring that you have enough room to fit all your pieces. First, we're going to start with the sleeves. Fold the sleeve gusset in half and pin so that the sleeve gusset is pointing towards where the cuffs will be. And like with the rest of our seams, we're going to back stitch this and fell it down with some whipping stitches. Now we're going to attach the other seam, matching the same pinning pattern, but this time sewing all the way down to the end of the seam, stopping three inches before the cuff. Now we're going to finish the slits of our cuffs. Fold over an eighth of an inch to a fourth of an inch twice, encasing the raw seam. Whip this down with small whipping stitches. Now finish the sleeve seam. Using two to three rows of small running stitches, gather the cuff end of the sleeve.
Now take the top of the sleeve and measure from out from each corner of the gusset three inches and gather with two to three running stitches in between these pins. Leave the running stitches in and next we're gonna move on to the body. Mark six inches up in the bottom hem of your body, pinning together the two halves. Mark your arm's eye measurement. Your arm's eye measurement is to preference. You can try it on and pin where you'd like it to fall, or you can measure where your arm's eye would be and add a few inches. We're going to do a back stitch in between these two pins and fell into place. When you're done finishing your side seams, pin in your sleeves, matching half the gusset to the bottom side seam and the top to the top of the shoulder. Do a back stitch all around and fell into place. Now to find our head opening, measure in from either shoulder the measurement we found using our neck to shoulder measurement. Draw a line in between and cut. Find the middle and cut down seven inches as shown in our diagram. Fold the neck gussets in half. This is going to be a bit fiddly, but we're going to try and pin them into that corner that we made on our shoulders. I would suggest doing one seam at a time, carefully manipulating around the corner. Finish the front slits in a similar way that we did the cuffs, by folding over an eighth to a fourth of an inch and whipping down. Fold the collar in half long ways and sew up the short ends. Lightly gather the neckline, then pin and sew down the collar into place. Finish in a similar way we did our cuffs, by folding over, pinning, then whipping down. Now fold over the hem twice by eighth or a fourth of an inch, whip down. This is a similar finish as to what we did on the cuffs. On the neck, choose a side and make a thread loop with multiple strands of thick thread. You can use a pencil, a knitting needle, or all to help with the consistency. Check that it goes through the loop, then ease a dense blanket stitch around. Mark and sew the button on the other side. I'm using a heavily waxed thread for this and it works perfectly fine. You can also use a buttonhole twist or upholstery thread. Take your small buttons and mark the width of them on the bottom corner of your cuff and connect with a line. 
cut open and make a buttonhole stitch around. Try on a mark where you'd like the button to sit and sew it on the opposite side. Now we're going to reinforce the bottom edge of our slit. You can do this on all the points of stress on your shirt, like the cuffs and the hem corners. Do a blanket stitch around about a half inch on either side, then connect up top with a thread bar. Do a dense blanket stitch over the thread bar. This is similar to the way we made our thread loop at our neck. Be sure to give your garment a good press before wearing it, and that's it, you're done! I will link all of the materials that I use or similar materials to what I have used in this video. This is definitely not sponsored by any particular store. I get a lot of my supplies from Berlin and Trowbridge and fabric stores. Fabric dash stores? Fabric stores? I'll link it in the bio. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments and I'll try to answer them as best I can. Be sure to tag me in any of your makes. I'm on Instagram, TikTok, and I think that's it all under the same username, Magpie Atelier, and I'll see you in the next one.